hello developers how you all guys doing i'm back with another video and today let's discuss how to integrate socket io with fast api let's get started guys back to visual studio code here i have a project socket io app and in that project i have a server folder which contains my main.py file which is just empty as of now and my pip file which has all my dependencies I'm using PPNV as uh, Python virtual environment manager. You can use uh, VENV or any other virtual managers that you like. So let me first install FastAPI, UVCorn, and Socket.io. FastAPI, UVCorn, and uh, the Socket.io library is called Python Socket.io. So let me install those so I have installed those and uh, we, all, we can also see those in the pip file and now I'm going to start by importing my fast API it will be from fast API import fast API and I'm just gonna also import UVCon to run my application and I am creating a fast API app quickly and I am going to write the run command here if name is to main uvcon dot run I'm just following the uh, recommended uh, structure for the app argument in the uvcon dot run function you can also just use app here but uh, I prefer using main column app so uh, this does this is the actual recommended way uh, because I am gonna set the reload flag to true so in order for this to work you have to follow this naming convention here the main here just denotes the name of the file in which you have your app and app denotes the variable name that you have assigned to your fast api app so it should also include a colon in between those and the reload flag just tells uvcon to reload the whole application whenever there are file changes so it will update on live while you type your code now i'm also going to quickly write a root endpoint i'm just gonna return a message hello developers let me go ahead and check that python 3 hyphen m main so you can see that it is running at this particular port I open Firefox let me go to the port localhost 8000 and go to our URL it just says that so our fast API app is running now let's jump into the socket IO part so coming to the socket IO part, I'm not going to write the socket IO app here itself. I want it to be separate in a, in another Python file, which I'm going to call sockets.py uh, and make sure you're not naming it socket.py, which uh, I did and I faced some circular dependency uh, issues because I, I guess there is uh, some other socket.py file already the socket.io library so just make sure you avoid using socket.py so now i'm going to import our socket.io library and then i'm going to create an socket.io server which is going to be our socket.io dot async server and this is going to take a couple of arguments uh, the first one will be uh, async mode so you want this async mode to be ASCII because fast api is uh, 
uh, an ASCII application which is uh, asynchronous server gateway interface and the second argument will be related to course which will be course underscore allowed origins so it's just a list of origins a list of strings which are the origins that you want your socket or your server to allow and I'm just leaving it as an empty list so that the socket IO server knows that it should not touch the course part. If you want to allow all the incoming traffic from any other cross origin, uh, you can just specify a star. But in my case, I don't want it to touch the course part. It, uh, I'm going to mount my socket IO application to the fast API application which will be uh, forwarding the incoming traffic to the Socket.io app. So I don't want it to touch any course because my fast API application will be doing that for me. So it's it's very important for the project to run properly uh, so that you should make sure that this list is empty. So once that is done you should create a Socket.io app from the socket io server that we have created just now so this is going to be socket io dot uh, asgi app and it is going to take socket io uh, server which we have created just now socket io server and then it's going to take a socket io path so it, which path it will be running it so by default you can see that they have specified that to be socket.io but for now I'm just going to say sockets so there you go this is your socket.io application which is already running and all all that is left to do is to import it from here from sockets import socket.io app so once you import that, as I have said, we are going to mount this Socket.io application to our Fast API app so that all the traffic that the Fast API gets will be routed towards the Socket.io app. So I'm just going to say app.mount and I'm going to give the path where the Socket.io should be mounted. I want it to be mounted at the root and then i'm going to specify the app which is our socket io app so that's all guys you have mounted your socket io application to fast api now let's check that in action before testing it we just need something to be running here i did not do anything else other than creating a socket io server and making an application with it so i'm going to add an event to the socket.io server which we have created like this with the decorator provided in the documentation so this decorator just uh, is a decorator for an event and the event name would be connect so whenever our socket.io app gets the connect event this function will be automatically run with the help of this decorator so i can just say print connected but wait who is connected so to identify who the client is actually every client will be provided with an SID and also they have uh, uh, some arguments uh, actually two other arguments called uh, environ and also auth so this environment and auth are uh, two dictionaries which will contain uh, information related to authentication in auth and the environ will have some optional variables that you would be uh, sharing from the client side so if you are using a javascript socket io library you you can share uh, some information in the environ and uh, authentication tokens or your username passwords in the auth so all those things will be provided in these two variables but uh, as of now we are not going to use both of these so we can safely ignore them and I can say uh, that uh, instead of just connected I just want to say that SID is connected so, to, so that whenever 
a client connects uh, they will be allocated with an SID and that SID will be printed over here so that I know that a new client is connected so how to test the client side part how to connect with our server I tried connecting with postman so in postman there is a way to connect to web sockets using uh, uh, an experimental feature in postman but uh, it doesn't seem to be working with socket IO servers so the only other way that I found is to actually build a socket IO client itself you can choose to build a JavaScript version or there is also a Python version and the documentation will be here uh, in, in their uh, Socket.io website so the link will be in the description you can check that out so first they are asking us to install uh, the extras from so Python Socket.io which we already installed but as we also need the client we should be also installing this extra so let me just install that quickly let me stop the server and say pnv install so now that i have in installed the async io uh, extras for the socket io client I can go ahead and start building a new client. So let me create a client.py and, and in that I'm going to import socket.io of course and then in the same way that I have created my uh, socket.io server I'm going to do the same thing here but it's going to be socket.io client going to be a socket io dot async client and you can choose to uh, build normal client as well but here I am going with the asynchronous client so now in the same way uh, that I have uh, decorated my uh, server with the event I'm going to decorate my client as well with uh, an event socket io client dot event and the event will be connect event and it's not going to get any arguments so once it is connected i'm going to say i'm connected so once we have connected to uh, the server the client will just print out i'm connected so that we will know that the client has connected with our uh, socket IO backend server and in the same way I'm also gonna add a disconnect event which will be triggered whenever the uh, client has disconnected so once uh, you have written these two events the only thing left is to run this or run the client to run that uh, uh, unlike the server we have a fast API taking care of the running part but in our case uh, the client I'm just gonna use uh, async io to run the client import async io and I'm gonna say I'm gonna uh, create a main function which is uh, of course uh, asynchronous because uh, we need to be uh, awaiting uh, the client dot connect and client dot disconnect so uh, it's going to be an asynchronous function and I'm just going to wait uh, socket IO client dot connect and the connect is going to take uh, two arguments one is the URL which will be our socket IO server URL uh, and the headers uh, but uh, you can ignore them for now and the other important thing is the socket IO path as you see the default value is socket.io but uh, I want to set it to sockets because in the server part I have done the similar thing uh, in order to match the path uh, in the server I want to set it to sockets so let me do that quickly URL is equal to uh, it will be our local host uh, at which my fast API 
backend will be running uh, and the port will be 8000 and then uh, the socket IO path will be sockets there you go uh, that's basically how you build a client and connect it with the backend which is also a socket IO server and then uh, once I'm connected the connect event will be triggered and the client is gonna print I'm connected after that I want to disconnect the client so I'm also gonna await socket IO client dot disconnect so it's not going to take any arguments so once that is run I'm going to run the main function with async IO async IO dot run main so that's basically how you build a client uh, with socket IO Python library so once this is built I want to start my backend like this and I also want to start my socket IO frontend so let me just uh, activate my ppnv shell python3 hyphen n client cool we see that our client is connected so it has printed i'm connected and also disconnected but what is this uh, message that we see unclosed client session so that is something which we are not doing correctly let's look at uh, the server part and whoa here we see too many errors and we also see an internal server error why that would be happening which means we have missed something else so if you see correctly at the error message we have we if you see the error message correctly we forgot installing uh, one of these libraries which is a uvcon standard or the websockets library or uh, ws proto so in order for fast api to uh, run correctly uh, it needs to have uh, one of these libraries installed so i'm just gonna quickly install websockets uh, which is one of the recommended uh, libraries here you can choose to install uh, any of the other two also so pnv install websockets so while that is installing i just want to add another event for the backend server which is uh, the disconnected event And it's not gonna get any uh, environ or auth it's just gonna get an SID so as the package has installed let me clear the console for the server and start my server again main and also clear my client and start the client cool so now you see that we don't have any errors and let me check the backend and you can see that our client has connected with this particular SID and it has disconnected again cool great stuff so that is how you basically integrate socket IO with uh, fast API uh, I'm using the app dot mount function provided by fast API and not using the uh, recommended way of socket IO documentation because that did not work for me and I found that to be unstable and uh, causing many issues so I just went went ahead and used the fast API way feel free to try that out and let me know in the comment section that's all for this video guys in the next video I am planning to cover how to connect a react socket IO client with the server that we have built in this video make sure that you subscribe to the channel to not miss that video and if you learned something please hit the like button see you soon guys and like always the link to the source code will be in the description check that out if you want to and happy coding